carry with us our own baggage of stresses and strains, burdens on our head, leading us away from the core values. The core values for which we are here today, in uniform. The values of nationalism, patriotism, focused on the job. Sometimes we do get stressed and our loyalties, our priorities get misplaced, leading to misplaced focus. Hence, it is of most important essence that we stay on course and the subject is important thus. Gentlemen, this topic of the day on human excellence and stress management needs no introduction, but it needs an insight into all of us. The subject is discussed the world over, be it men in uniform or without. It's an important one. Hence the topic of the day. We are fortunate to have an eminent thinker and speaker amongst us today, Dr. Pranav Pandya, Honorable Chancellor, Dev Sanskriti Vishwavidyalaya. A word about the distinguished speaker. Dr. Pranav Pandya, a gold medalist in MD Medicine, who quit a well-settled job in the US in the American Medical Department to pursue his endeavors in spreading positivity, to pursue, to awaken and enlighten the youth of the country. In 78, he joined the Yog Nirman mission at Shantikunj and since has initiated several path-breaking research studies on psychology and benefits of meditation and pranayama. He has also co-authored a number of books on scientific spirituality. Extremely widely traveled, he has conducted a, no, a number of inspirational talks for the youth all over India and abroad to take up basic aspects of human excellence and channelize them and hone them using three-pronged approach comprising of self-discipline, selfless service and adoption of the divine values. On similar lines, he has established the Dev Sanskriti Vishwavidyalaya in 2002, which is on the basic principles of our ancient Gurukuls of Nalanda and Takshila. His services have been acclaimed the world over. Amongst the most notable was the honor bestowed upon him by NASA as the most distinguished scientist in 1996. Thereafter, he has been conferred with the Gyan Bharati Award in 1998 and also with Rashtra Seva Samman in 2001, amongst the most notable and coveted ones. I, on behalf of Major Rajesh Tyagi, Offshedding Commandant and Dean College of Military Engineering, welcome Dr. Pranav Pandya, Honorable Chancellor to CME and request him to deliver his talk to this gathering. Honorable Chancellor, sir. Respected Major General Rajesh Tyagi ji, officiating co commandant of this CME, College of Military Engin Engineering. Arrest all military officers who are present here. All the cadets who are present in the back rows. I'm really thrilled to be here amongst the, in, the, in this military college. I've been to various cantonments and I delivered my lecture on stress management and scientific spirituality. I have been to Jalandhar, I have been to Ambala and uh, I spoke on video to various other cantonments also. Then I was in IMA, Dehradun and there also I spoke on the same subject. I am really thrilled to be in South, the head of the very big premier institution and this big premier institution is supposed to be one of the unique one because it takes out the zeal out of you. It takes out the enthusiasm out of you to, for the service of the country, for the service of the nation. As an engineer, you could have served anywhere in the world, but as an engineer, when you come to the co service corps, you are definitely doing a lot. We are very close to Bengal sappers in Rudki. We are very close to various, various other um, uh, military officers in Dehradun. But uh, mostly, uh, our talks are limited to the spirituality. But today, I'll be talking to you on scientific spirituality language. 
my talk is basically on human excellence and stress management how you can excel yourself how you can uh, identify you start getting excellence without yourself excellence is in fact the way to be we don't know i want to be what we do is you very promising the outside uh, and very outside so looking, looking towards outside so we know about outside that outside there are so many malls so many cities so many uh, various beautiful sceneries and beautiful scenic uh, spots in the world out of them one spot yesterday one of the very important country for us for the safety of this country nepal has been devastated i really uh, express my severe uh, condolences to the all those who are departed departed souls and then the whatever has happened the military army ndrf every everyone they are helping them out my team i have got a ndrf team with me also disaster management force we are one of the non government organization we are recognized in the government of india and we have sent about 10 vehicles with doctors and tents and many various other medicines to the nepal day for yesterday only when i start left for pune the same day after the earthquake immediately i left it i asked them to be, leave and they are there they are already working in kathmandu this particularly outside world is full of beauty as well as the ugliness and many other things but we don't know about the inside i'll just get you acquainted with the inside of it how we can go ahead with this from a spiritual point of view the knowledge and faith conviction plus belief this brings in us the energy this brings in us the various aspects of the inner potential uh, generally when we know vidya vidya means what we understand it by uh, the education it is not education Fa vidya is a knowledge shraddha faith conviction on our own self self belief and then the belief shraddha and vishwas all these three things combined together they form the various our core inside core when all these three powers are combined you get a superlative degree of efficiency which is termed as human excellence this is definition of human excellence when these three powers are there knowledge faith and belief then you start getting excellence developed inside you excellence is in fact the will to win i want to win there are few very promising Uh, and very challenging sentences written on the in the walls of the CME when I entered inside and, and as my car was passing, I was watching everything. Excel, uh, challenges, all these all these words were there. The will to win. The soldier will never uh, be going back, and he will be always fighting in the front. He has to take the wounds here in the chest, not in the back. The will to win. the desire to succeed this is what is the uh, ingredient of the excellence the desire to succeed we should succeed at, at any cost this at any cost word is not very good at any cost means by deceiving others by cheating others no by very very well good means that is what is the ethical uh, aspect of it and the benchmark of performance it is the benchmark of performance relatively speaking excellence if you excel in everything excellence is something which uh, brings the best of you and when it brings the best of you then it shows your performance also that you are really the best of the lot human excellence character building and the feeling of nationalism is an essential element for human excellence uh, the basic things for all of you who are seated here is the feeling of nationalism we are committed to one nation we are very safe we are sleeping in our houses in the night very comfortably in the air conditions or in with the fan air because of the military people because of the services because of the corps which are located on the borders plus those who are working from the inside the country so this is the feeling of nationalism our country our mother our mother india in nobody nowhere else you must have heard the word mother in mother mother pakistan mother bangladesh or mother america or anywhere it is only in india that mother india we call it matrabhumi mata bhumi hi putro aham prithivya this is the upanishad's sentence this bhumi this land is my mother 
and I am its son. I am its son or daughter, whatever it is. Putra is genderless, so putro aham prithivya. This is what is the feeling of nationalism. And then the character building. If I don't build my character, if I don't strengthen myself, if I don't strengthen my moral values, then there is no sense in my development. My development should be not only intellectual development, but my development should be spiritual development, moral development. And that development has to be seen by character building process. How to build it? How to develop it? How to develop your own self? I will just quote Swami Vivekananda. Take up an idea, make that idea your life, you think of it, you dream of it, live on that idea, never waver from it and let the brain, muscles, nerves, every part of your body be full of that idea and just leave every other idea alone. Any other idea if it intervenes in between, just leave it alone. Negativity, don't let it come in. Positivity will survive, positivity has to be survived. And if you are able to do that, you will be successful. All those who became successful in the world, including those who became Dhanpati, Kuberpati, like Warren Buffet, or like the Bill Gates, or like Ambani, those people who got the money, those who got the intelligence, those who became the various literary personalities with earned the Nobel Prizes, they also became successful because of this, taking up an, one idea at a time and making that idea your life and leave that idea each and every breath, each and every breath should be full of that idea. This is what is the concept of Swami Vivekanan, which I understand is the, uh, is the main sphere from where my, my whole presentation will speak. This idea is thought, a, a positive thought about myself, who am I, how I have, to, I have to progress, how I have to go ahead. This positivism about ourselves and all the time not getting haunted by the negativity, making negativity our fuel, if negativity comes it will become our fuel, we will suppress it and we will be, we'll become more and more positive. This is what is the thought revolution. You have to develop a thought, you have to evolve a thought, you have to develop a thought. And that thought process has to be cultivated in such a way that you start making a growth inside you by positive thoughts. That growth, that culture of the thought or the cultivation of the thought has to be done by this process of idea, living that idea. Don't let it go. Live with it while sleeping, while going to walk, while going to your exercise, while going to your gym. Every time th think, uh, think about that, that I will do that, I will do that and I will do that. And whosoever has become successful in this world has become successful because of this only. We are what we repeatedly do. We become that. We, our excellence therefore is not an act but it is a habit. It is said that whatever you think, you do like that, you start doing like that. You start doing like that, speaking like that. Yeah, it, it becomes your habit and after it becomes your habit, it becomes your character. It becomes your part of personality. So whatever you are, whatever you think, you think, one thinks it becomes like that. This is what is the excellency that Aristotle has said that we are what we repeatedly do. Excellence is an act but not, not a, but a habit. Relatively speaking, again the same thing. It is the will to win, the desire to succeed, the benchmark of performance which I repeating. Excellence is the manifestation of all the qualities of person with adoption of perfection. All the qualities of person. And our, our target should be perception, uh, perfection. We should be able to achieve perfection at any cost. And at that cost, at level, I will say, put up your effort to the maximum. Put up your effort to the maximum. Perseverance, perseverance. Keep on doing it, keep on doing it. Failure doesn't, should not demoralize you. There was a King George Edward V who was defeated by the other enemies many times and he was in, lying in a uh, very barren area where he was totally deserted by the even soldiers, there was nobody. He saw a spider going up, he saw a spider going up, he, he, the spider fell down. He kept on seeing the spider. Spider made about 100 attempts and ultimately reached on the top. And in the meantime, it made its own web also. It 
made its root also. That incident changed his heart and he said, no, I will make an attempt. Ten times I have been defeated, but I will not be defeated now. And he collected his people, army, and ultimately again made, a effort, made an effort and ultimately he was successful. Excellence is the manifestation of all qualities of the person. You can see this gentleman making a pot. Now this is all this excellence, the quality of the building, quality of the artistry, quality of the various perfections, they are achieved by the various practices with the adoption of perfection. Human excellence is an outcome of his being the prince of God. You see, we all have been labeled a very good designation besides our own designations like I am a doctor and Commandant Saab is a, a Major General. Similarly, one very good, good designation is given to us. That is the Son of God, Prince of God, Bhagwan Ka Rajkumar. You are the Prince of the God. Nobody else has God. Donkey doesn't have it. The ass doesn't have it. The, the sheep doesn't have it. The cow doesn't have it. It is only the human beings because we are born with all the deities inside us. The almighty intellect is the gift along with sentiments which we have only found in human beings. So this is what is the human excellence is an outcome of this being the prince of God. We being the prince of God, we can achieve the designation of the godly being. We can become God. We can become like God. There is a saying in Upanishad, Jeevo Brahmai Vanaparaha. Jeev Brahma hai, iske alawa kuch nahi hai. Jeev Brahma ban sakta hai. This is only in the Indian culture that this concept is given. That a human being can become God, creation of the creator, he can become creator. All our incarnations, they were born as human being and they started doing all those abnormal things and ultimately they did it. This is what is the beauty of this particular culture in which the cultural uh, perspectives show us that you have got immense potential inside you. Excellence, Sri says, excellence is evolution of human intellect to supreme state of consciousness. Consciousness is a very important, uh, uh, very good uh, thing inside us which is present as a para chetana. You see, our body is uh, five elements. Chitijal, Pava, Gagan, Samira. All earth element, sky element, water element, all these five elements. Plus three mental elements. Man, Buddhi, Ahankar. This is known as Ashtadha Prakriti. Eight pronged nature. This eight pronged nature is our all uh, Apara Prakriti. But there is Para Prakriti which is consciousness. These two combined together they bring life in us. They make us more and more stronger. Lord Krishna says in Gita, Mai Sarva Midam Protam Sutre Mani Ganayu. I am bound, I am there inside them. You can, you can see there is a, you, can, you must have seen a rosary and in rosary you must have seen a thread and that thread is lay, taking the um, credit of uh, all the beads bringing, being, being, being knit together. That thread is God, Almighty, Consciousness. That Consciousness is inside us. That Consciousness is Keep giving us a designation of prani, prana. Because of that, we have prana. Many animals and other 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 people also have it. They have the prana, but our prana is different than that. That that prana shakti, the vitality, the immunity, that the concept of having that particular feeling of having a prana of the Almighty's consciousness is something which is the very most important thing. Supreme state of consciousness. Excellence is the result of high intention, sincere effort. Uh, I'll just keep on explaining each. High intention. Your intention should be very high. Your low intention, denigrating others, pulling, leg pulling, this, is, this will not work. High intentions. Your sincere effort. Your effort should be very sincere. 24 hours, 24 into 7, you will have to be on, on your target. Intelligent direction. Your intelligence should direct you, should go to that way, should go in such a way that you ultimately reach that level. A skillful execution. The execution should be very skillfully done. The execution sometimes is not done skillfully and that's why you fail. The failure is because of the skill, lack of skill and that skill can be developed. Gradually we practice. Actually practice is something which is very important. Even a doctor, if he doesn't practice, nobody shows to the, that goes to the doctor. A advocate, if he doesn't practice, 
nobody goes to that advocate the practice is very important in our day to day life you do every day you do military exercises every day you do the exercises walking running racing uh, the various postures various things which you do the mil- the exercises all these things are necessary for keeping your body fit physically fit similarly there are men- mental exercises from keeping yourself mentally fit similarly there are spiritual exercises to keep you spiritually fit if you don't do them daily the skillful execution is not done daily then you will find that you are getting somewhere crippled and lastly the vision to see obstacles is opportunities obstacles are always opportunities they sharpen you they make your path very smoother so we we should not be wavered by the obstacles obstacles may come in our way but obstacles will never determine our path this is what you have to tell yourself every day every moment genius is what you have excellence is what you do with it now you must be just curious about knowing what is genius and what is excellence genius is what you have you got in inherent genius inside you by that uh, class 10 boy come out comes out with 9 for 10 plus uh, all 100 plus 100 100 percent points um, i don't remember that word which they get the the grade uh, etc other things in the central schools and other schools but that grade system makes you Uh, perfect person as far as your genius is concerned but excellence is what you do with it isse kya karenge aap excellence what you what you will do with this knowledge will you become a good person will you become a very skilled person whatever, whatever you want you have de- decided in your mind that that you will become swami ji swami vivekananda ji emphatically proclaimed that you are not born sinners you see there has been a lot of misconceptions about our ourselves that we are born sinners let us all rectify our sins let us all try to uh, get rid of our sins we are born divine we are born divine aham brahmasmi aham brahmasmi that is what is shivoham tattvamasi ayam atma brahm the five mahavakyas of the vedanta they tell tell you that you are born divine you have to think of this divinity each and every second the goal is to manifest this divinity within or out by any means work or worship or any means but always think that you are divine being and that divine being is giving you more and more energy this is what is the key of excellence just a slide in hindi manush jeevan ko shresth banne ka aadhar uske andar maujood acche gun hai jo prakat hone ke liye apna rasta khojte rehte hain our good qualities sanyam self restraint your control on yourself time management money management resources management which you have got inside you indri shakti then lastly the thought management these are the four management four restraints which tell you how to keep sanyam seva service to society which all of you are doing in many in many ways even in war and even in peace vinamrata humbleness polity sahanshilta tolerance uh, you should have patience enough and then love and compassion towards everybody sadbhav the uh, feeling of uh, same being to each and every other these qualities make you human being from nar pashu nar kitak nar pishach all these three yonis you become nar nar manav dev manav maha manav paigambar avatar devdoot all these grading gradings are in this birth only in this body only how to do it that is what is the divinity teaches you today we are living in a world in which the three aims that change our lives in last decade i am just coming to today what is happening today uh, money m- m- mobiles and malls malls actually these three things have spoiled our life like anything they have made lot of comfort also they have given us lot of comfort also but <coughs> money if you have got enough money you can get a uh, lot of things in your world you can keep on collecting those items those things unknowingly many times and you can keep on restoring them like a waste paper waste waste uh, uh, material or waste articles in your house you keep on assembling them money has come immensely and money has gone very imperfectly in the various quarters quarters of the society so there are few people who are very rich there are few people who are totally 
without money there are few people who are medium income rich and because of that the, there is a, a disparity in the society M mobiles the cell phone it is one of the most uh, uh, i'd say uh, so important recovery uh, discovery in the modern times in last 15 20 years it has changed the life of the people you are very close to each other you are very close to uh, your parents if you are away from country or you are away from your place it brings you cl closer to your uh, mother father your friends your girlfriend your boyfriend anybody and ultimately this thing with social media it has ma made the facebook and other things but the other aspect of this other aspect of money is also bad other aspect of mobile is also bad uh, other, other aspect is blackmailing others by the facebook putting something wrong about someone on the facebook uh, rumors on the facebook rumors on the um, uh, various whatsapp and other things money mobiles and malls malls small culture has come and mall culture is uh, symbolic of the consumeristic culture and uh, globalization i am not against it i say it is good everything is all three are very good no problem but this culture three m's had changed our lives in last 20 years you see when i passed out in 1975 76 when i did my md that time what was the society and now i'm not that old as you might be presuming but i feel that today the world is totally different today the modern world is totally different without any having these three things you are, you are not a uh, civilized person this is what is considered so i think this is particularly the important thing which is very important then you, the modern lifestyle is leading to lack of self introspection lack of self interaction socially we are totally going away from each other social uh, outlook is totally different people are becoming more and more isolated lonely and uh, we 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 thought that with the mobile and other things we will be very close to each other we are not close to each other we are isolated in ourselves and there are lot of people whom i found whom i find in i am running a university with the youngsters very young people 16 years to 25 year age group and girls and boys combined together coed 8000 students and you can imagine that those students how i control them and how i keep on giving them keeping them engaged in various activities i have permitted them mobile but i have seen everything i have i have uh, developed them in such a way their personality in such a way that i have tried to engage them in good activities and they may talk to each other but the, uh, the other mischiefs are not happening but these are the social interactions are getting getting totally lacking totally they are lacking in society today then the search of happiness via materialistic means we are going to materialism and materialism is bringing a bringing a becoming a very important part of our life then you can see it's a lack of self introspection we are unable to introspect ourselves we are unable to know our our own self who we are what we are what for we have come on this earth what was the purpose of god to send us on this earth we are unable to do it because of these these three things modern lifestyle life not in communion with nature i was very pleased to see in your campus it's a very old campus the birds and the and the plants their photographs were there all the uh, everywhere and this was one with one thing which i wherever i go i just catch few important things and i caught this thing that i should have also have in my campus 100 acre campus uh, this th these types of thing the, the various photographs of the various birds extinguishing birds extinguishing species and plants we are not get in communion with nature and being not in communion with nature has led to this catastrophe in nepal i have been to kathmandu many times and i have seen how in last 5 6 years they have grown like anything they have no grown there is not a single necessity of a stone house over there kathmandu kathmandu means wooden houses mandu made of kathmandu cut wood and it's a quick area it's a hilly area most of the people have died because of the they were in the houses and the all the stones and all the linters and all the cemented blocks they fell on their body and they could could not many of them could not could not be taken out till now you see not in communion with nature what nature wants from you greenery we need lot of trees we are cutting the trees 
but we are not implanting the trees. I started a campaign of 4 million trees to be planted initially all over the country and now 6 million more trees are going to be planted. We are, our intention was to plant 10 million trees all over the country, various areas. And what we do is that in, in the memory of her father, in the memory of her grandparents, in the memory of her grandmother, you can do it. Or if you want to do something on your birthday or a marriage anniversary, you do it like this. If we start planting the trees and especially the fruiting, fru fruiting trees or herbal trees, they will be of a lot of values to the society. This is what we are doing there. Denial of responsibility towards society. We deny our responsibility towards society. Society is because of us and we are there because of society. Even a matchbox, if you go, for, go, to, for, go to purchase, six persons have invoked their energy and their resources in making that matchbox. Paper, the phosphorus, the, uh, the strip on which you rub the uh, matchstick. All these things and the majestic itself, all these people, six people, they, you are indebted to these six people. You cannot say that I am I am not related to society. Society is not at, 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 at all involved in with me, with me. No, you are a part of society and you have to do something for society. Problems of modern life, as I have said, said, smoking, alcohol and drugs. This is what is a modern time. In the a very big, big obstacle in the path of excellence is these things which are now causing in every five smokes 13 to 15 cigarettes a day. 13 to 15 cigarettes, five persons are smoking in all the smokers. And this is causing a lot of uh, harm to our body system, our whole thing and then the chewing of the tobacco which is very bad. All this points to a severely stressed society. Today, all of you who are senior officers, you know that in last 20 years, things have gone from bad to worse. Why? Because there are so many things happening in the society which are not good. And people are in stress today. They are living in a too much of stress with no healthy escape activities. There used to be healthy escape activities like meeting together, like going together for walk, going to park, going with the family, enjoying with the family, the festivals. Out of 365 days, over 200 days used to be festival. And we used to enjoy them, those festivals. But now we don't enjoy. We, go, we don't have time. 24-7 we are busy. And ultimately this is leading to the stressed society. The society which is stressed will not be able to function. It will be defunct society. And this defunct society will not be able to prosper, will not be able to grow. What I see is the consumerism, the globalization, the capitalism, what has, invent, what has entered in our, in our country, in a very fast way in last 15-20 years has led us to a very difficult type of uh, situation in which you want something and you can't have it and there is a stress. Now how the stress comes is a because stress is something which is very very important for, for you to understand. Lifestyle disorders, stress, anxiety and depression. The outcome comes out in this way and sometimes you eat more because of the stress, you to get rid of stress, you smoke more because you, oh, to get rid of stress, you rest more because of you to get rid of stress and ultimately you get the backache and many other disorders. Stress is a non-specific response of the body to any demand made upon it or to an external stimuli. Any demand made upon it. I, ju I just give you, you are a, all military engineers, so I will just give an example. Take a pin and that safety pin, keep on bending it three, four times, five, six times, a point will come and it will break. It is bending of your own self. You are being subjected to so many external stimuli and internal stimuli. Internal stimuli are your own passion, your aggression, your anger, your various emotions, negative and positive emotions. Because of them, you are getting totally broken. When this, is, is the, this condition comes, and ultimately the stress comes. And this stress is leading to a lot of, lot, lot and lot of problems today. Stress can also be generated from within by hopes, lot of hopes we have from ourselves, lot of hopes my parents or my colleagues have from me, fears, lot of anxieties, lot of fears, lot of phobias, expectations, lot of expectations I have. I have a lot of expectation, people have a lot of expectation from me and this stress can originate because of that. Beliefs, lot of beliefs because of my 
uh, who being belonging to a particular community, per belonging to a particular sect, there may be a lot of beliefs. Ultimately, the stage, 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 stage comes when we, you get totally uh, like a salmon fish, which I am just going to show you. As the fish leaps, flops and struggles upstream to spawn, the level of cortisol surge. Now this uh, salmon fish, it goes against the current. I am just showing you. Hormone all level also leads to the salmon to stop eating. The digestive tracts wither their away and their immune system breaks down. And after laying their eggs, they die of exhaustion and infection. It is, it is an inbuilt process. How it happens? I am just showing you the small video film. This is salmon fish. It is going up against the current. It travels up to about 100 miles. It can travel up to that level. At that time, it has got energy. It wants to lay down the egg safely. But this exhaustion, this stress in which she wants to have a, a, a safe area for laying down the eggs make her so exhausted, makes her so exhausted that ultimately it withers down because of low, lowering immunity. This is what is happening today. These are the fishes, salmon fishes and you will see very soon the eggs being laid down by them. This particular concept of stress I had taken from this particular fish for one reason that they die immediately after laying down the eggs. They die, lie down. You can see dying of fishes, a live film from National Geographic. This is what is happening today. Human beings are also being subjected to this. Human beings are getting totally burnt out. These are the eggs you can see uh, which and ultimately the next generation takes over. So this is what is happening. The salmon <coughs> cannot help being stressed out. I had just shown all these things. This particular one thing which, I, which was, I was just going to show, they are programmed to die. God has made a program for us to also die. If we go against the wishes of the God, wishes of the God are go, against, go with nature. Don't overdo anything. The systems propelled into overdrive by evolutionary design. And because of this evolutionary design, they are supposed to die. They are supposed to die. This is particularly, is, this example, it attracted me like anything, the plight of Pacific Salmon, how it happens. The stress is a man-made disaster. Man has invited this disaster for itself. If you want to get rid of stress, humans on the other hand are usually subjected to stresses of their own making. We have, we have invited these, these things. We invited anger, we invited jealousies, we invited various aspects of the emotions, negative emotions. We have got various expectations from us and we have got various uh, ill feelings about others and they make us more and more stressed. The chronic, primarily psychological pressures of modern life. Psychological pressures of modern life are causing a lot of problem to us. The, I know the modern life is really, really very, 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 very uh, full of pressure. Lot of, lots of needs, lots of needs of children, lot of needs of the various work, work wise. Uh, I have been associated with the organization from where I have come since 1977, 78. And since then I am working on various aspects of the human being, how we can enhance their efficiency, and how can we can do it. In 1984, I started le lecturing on stress management. First time I prepared my presentation and there are no, no, many, no more slides are there, those slides are not here. But when I presented for the first time in a medical institute in Chandigarh, people asked me, Dr. Sir, why are you presenting stress management? Our India is very very healthy, we are always happy, we are all, we keep on all the time always laughing and we are have a good family life. I said maybe not today but next, next 10 years you will see the effect of this. Whatever you have today, modernity coming gradually, gradually. By that time 1982, the Commonwealth Games had come to India, color television had come to India and lot of things had come, had, had were started import, being imported to India. I was sure of that, that it will happen. Psychological pressures of modern age, modern life, this is causing various pressure. I don't say that you go to jungle, you go to 
keep these things in the in in the closet don't use them i say use them but use them with with vision use them with totally your own um, wisdom behind them you whether we are going to use them correctly or not stress is a silent killer stress is just like diabetes it it kills you grow gradually gradually slowly slowly and you start getting affected ultimately a point comes when you start getting various chronic disorders i just i'll just go to them a psychiatric disorder that can occur following the experience or witnessing of life threatening event is ptds post traumatic disorder stress disorder this ptsd is uh, very common in the war situation or in the combat situations or in a natural calamity like what we had day for yesterday in this uh, trauma uh, situation like military combat i said natural disasters the what i just was mentioning and the terrorist incidents you can see the same thing and serious accidents in which the person is dies in front of you you have a immense stress at that time and that post traumatic stress leads to a disorder for about 3 months 4 months 5 months if you are not treated properly and lastly the physical or sexual assault in adult or childhood these are the few things which are the causes of ptsd post traumatic stress disorder this is very common in military areas and this is why i brought this particular slide for you armed forces are exposed to lot of situations which may give rise to ptsd there are situations many of the situations are very 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 sensitive situations most survivors of trauma return to normal given a little time a time should be given to them patience should be given to them and in, in during that time the healing period time itself heals particularly uh, if they are taken care of by a good psychotherapist some people will have stress reaction they do not go away on their own they may even get worse these individuals may develop ptsd so they need psychotherapy they need treatment all the individuals with depressive tendencies are prone to commit suicide the individuals with aggressive attitude are are known to commit fratricide that is the murder of others and that fratricide is just like revenge taking revenge why you were doing that chronic stress are prone to commit fratricide it just a very uh, strange incidence that there were about as many 635 cases of suicide including attempted suicides and 67 cases of fratricide killings in the three services of the armed forces during the year 2003 to 2007 luckily a stress was given to um, uh, this particular fact and lot of uh, psychotherapists were put into the force and ultimately this figure has come down but this is something which is one one has to be very cautious extended tenure in counter insurgency and high altitude causes of stress like siachen you know how terrific the duty is uh, one of the very important key member dr manas mandal of drdo told me about the situation what happens in he said dr sab you cannot imagine how uh, in difficult situation the people are living there but people are living and you cannot live for more than 18 or 20 days there you have to come back you have to acclimatize first and then you have to go these are the various situations interpersonal relationship between officers jcos and soldiers and then the inappropriate responses from civil administration to resolve domestic problems lastly our initiative what we have done we have been very closely working with army we have got a cantonment in dehradun we have got a cantonment in raiwala we have got a cantonment in rudki and we are working with them we are uh, giving them among indian army personnel fourth battalion Raj rajput regiment shahjahanpur we worked with them 30 days each session lasting one and a half hours and we taught them various asanas postures this program consisted of integral yoga practice which included asanas pranayams prayers omkar and gayatri mantra and yoga nidra yoga nidra for calming your mind a sample of 60 army personnel was taken rank of jawan to jun junior commissioned officers participated in the study and participants completed the st standard self reported occupational stress index they filled up that and that showed that they they improved a lot in 9 days program and 30 days program result revealed that the participants experienced a statistically significant reduction of stress at workplace the findings suggest that the beneficial effect of yoga practices as well as yoga based interventions they are very 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 effective and ultimately for emotional interconnect with proper understanding of stress mechanism mind body soul you see 
today we are not talking about mind body medicine alone we are talking about mind body soul medicine mind body soul relationship stress can be coped you can cope with the stress i'll tell you few more aspect of stress but this particular mind soul body aspect is uh, uh, invented by me that unless and until you take care of spiritual fitness mental fitness and physical fitness you you cannot be a perfect person how stress originates body is a branches you are watering branches you are watering branches and you are giving fertilizer to branches mind is trunk nobody is taking care of trunk moral values are the roots and the ro- roots are getting denuded actually roots are getting uh, uh, various sorts of decay is happening in the roots decay of the moral values leads to the fall of the tree of the society so this is what is to be taken care of how the stress originates this is from here not abstract concept that you should do something about same day mind mind it that stress is a something which is not a abstract concept it has to be something which has to be taken off as an in your lifestyle you need to attend it attend to it now from right from now till every day every moment constructive stress and destructive stress there are two types of stress constructive stress and destructive stress constructive stress is one which makes you more and more stronger produces more adrenaline you are makes your muscles stronger and ultimately i tell i tell many times the stress is a tonic make a stress your tonic try to live with that stress and try to live with that stress in such a way that you are never at rest whenever you are at rest you are at rest fully this is what is the concept of st- constructive stress destructive stress is one which kills you which gradually gradually erodes you and this erosion starts occurring at very short level short term acute stress and long term chronic stress you can see the stress experienced and properly coped you can see this uh, cycle activity cycle and energy cycle and tension ups and downs are very common but it is a smooth rhythmic cycle it's a very smooth one it is not uh, uh, a different type of one but it is a very good good cycle if you go to the another one which is uh, this uh, stress too much activity too much tension too much depletion of energy too little activity tension depletion of energy so don't be among the too much and too little be be just in between and do, do your duty as honestly as possible this is what is the distress that is what is the constructive constructive stress is use stress eu stress dis stress this is what is the two things involves uh, the mechanism of stress involves integrated activity of cortex cortex is the one which is on the top this is the cortex frontal cortex parietal cortex and the hypothalamus this is the hypothalamus and next is autonomic nervous system our our parasympathetic and sympathetic system and neuromuscular system ne- neurons and the muscles lastly the hormonal system all hormones are associated with that so these are the interaction of these things and the whole body gets stirred up by the stress so you have to understand the importance of this particular thing prolonged or severe stress has been shown to weaken the immune system immunity is affected our immunity goes down we get very commonly common cold we get very commonly itching disorder we get very commonly many things which are causing which are the cause of the disorders so prolonged or severe stress is not good for you it strains the heart it damages memory cells in the brain and it is depositing fat at the west rather than the hips and buttocks it is factor for heart disease collection of fat here and at the at the west level is not good it is this is also not good it is not it should not be in the front also it should be also going down going down but first it should, it has to go from your west and ultimately a risk factor for heart disease cancer and other illnesses stress can even cause the straightening out of the chromosomes by erosion of telomeres telomeres are the tip of the you can see this one these are the telomeres they are the tip of the chromosomes it can change the genetics also stress can affect the genetics stress can bring genetic changes this is what is very dangerous burnout stress syndrome a debilitating psychological condition brought about by unrelieved work stress i i'll just give give you underline this un- unrelieved work stress work stress which you, in which you are not at relief at all you are all the time full of stress this should not happen and ultimately you are five stages of boss number one honeymoon you are full of euphoria euphoria you want to do it you will wake up for 24 hours 
fuel shortage ultimately fuels become short your inner 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 resources become short and chronic symptoms they start appearing like backache like uh, uh, water brush like uh, uh, various digestive disorders and for that you go to various uh, sorts of things like you start eating something you are smoking you have to start taking drinks you start taking coffee in plenty we start taking tea crisis comes ultimately that crisis leads to losing the marathon you lose the marathon i'll just explain them in a little bit more way honeymoon initial euphoria levits are spoiled your euphoria brings in from you inside you lot of energy fuel shortage depletion of energy fatigue insomnia escape activities chronic symptoms more fatigue ailments like ischemic heart disease irritable bowel bowel get irritated there is no infection but there are mucus comes out all the, all the time myalgia muscle pain bronchial asthma and peptic ulcer and depression these are the various disorders crisis pessimistic outlook for every outlook you are pessimistic you are never optimistic and has anxiety doubts about your own capabilities you, you doubt about your own self whether i am doing correct or not escape mentality tension headache chronic backache hypertension sleep disturbances you get up in the night without any reason and ultimately don't get sleep for 2 hours these are the burning out of stress syndrome boss word itself is very dangerous and that burn bur, burn out stress syndrome is there already boss the other reverse of this is ross rust out stress syndrome person has a stress under load so to get rid of stress under load what you should do how to get it from it stay alert be always in alert situation as you say in army caution savdhan ultimately that is stay alert that is stay alert should always be there take risk start taking risk avoid isolation don't be isolated live with the society and stretch for success all the time success is waiting for you overcome obsolescence don't become obsolete in modern world of today be in touch with uh, what is happening in the world and be in touch with your modern technologies also stress signals there are three types of signals nervous reflexes biting nails you must have seen cricketers doing this biting of the nails in the doing two jobs at a time you are uh, drinking tea also coffee also you are reading the newspaper also the tea and coffee f- falls down on the newspaper you get angry on yourself you are uh, doing two jobs at a time you are shaving also and you are drinking the coffee cup also ultimately in between you start forgetting and you start drinking that water which was used for the shaving wa- shaving purposes and you start drinking that water thinking it is a coffee these are the two in two two jobs at a time this is very common grinding teeth pecking at the facial skin all the time these are the stress signals how to identify you are in stress hunching shoulders all the time and uh, early symptoms are stomach upsets uh, although you are not eaten anything wrong headaches very common rashes and then the back pain it starts appearing and it starts giving you a green signal a red signal that ultimately you must be very very cautious and ultimately insomnia no sleep at all illnesses are asthma bronchial asthma the migraine adha cc ka dard bolte hain usko half of the uh, the uh, this son uh, is very very painful and very vascular headache we call it vascular headache digestive disorders and ultimately the skin disorders like uh, in, in neurodermatitis and other things and uh, sexual disorders inability to function normally these are the things which are happening very commonly signals of stress how to identify stress mood signals mood signals are anxiety depression frustration habitual anger or hostility and ultimately helplessness hopelessness and irritability restlessness aadmi hamesha pareshan ho jata hai i can't do it i can't help it i cannot manage it these are the mood signals restlessness and ultimately behavioral signs in they come out in your behavior aggression you become very aggressive you become very disturbed in your sleep emotional outburst many times you just bump, pump out anything like anything and you keep on uh, bursting your emotions on someone or the other your wife your children your subordinates or someone else who is not concerned with you leaving jobs undone and ultimately overreactive very overreactive to any small suggestion you are overreactive that capacity how to manage that capacity can be influenced by heredity your fa- father mother any anything childhood experience any mm, miss happening with you in childhood by diet exercise and sleep patterns and by the presence or absence of close personal relationships 
which is what is very common in today's modern world. Modern world, the close personal relationships are very lacking by income level and social status. And lastly, the most important, the presence or absence of higher and noble aims and ideals. I cannot and should not be cured of my stress. You should be to always taught. I should not be cured of stress. I should be taught how to enjoy it. If you understand that, then stress management will be very easy. Complete freedom from stress is death. Nobody can, in real sense, be freed, free from stress. Stress is, as I said, a spice of life. It's a tonic for life. WHO estimates that depression is going to be one of the fourth most important cause of disability worldwide and that by 2020, it will be the world's biggest killer. And this is what we have to be very worried about. Depression doesn't get cured by modern medicines. Lot of treatments are being done, lot of tablets are being produced, but nothing is being, nothing is helping out. General tips, take prescribed medication as directed by your healthcare professional, get enough sleep and rest, drink enough water in the from morning. Lot of, lot of people as all of us not do, do, take enough water. Five to eight liters of water a, a day, 24 hours is a must. If you take that much, you may have to go for pee many times, but don't worry. You are cleaning, you are clean, you are detoxifying your body. Detoxify your body, clean your body as much as possible. Avoid smoking or relying on alcohol or drugs to feel better. People rely more and more and more on alcohol. Build a support system. I don't say that don't take alcohol little bit in the social purposes, but don't be dependent on that. That, be, that leads to problem. Build a support system and that support system should be your own. People who listen to you and journal to express yourself. Try to express yourself in a blog. Try to express yourself in a letter to editor. Think and speak positively all the time. Keep your sense of humor. Sense of humor should be always alive. Change in dietary pattern, tip to enrich food, vegetarian diet. Try to change as, as much as possible. Besides daily drills, subtler exercises like asans and pranayam, pragya yoga. Pragya yoga was devised by my guru, Sri Ram Sharma Acharji. It is a combination of Surya Namaskar and many things which everybody can do. Breathing exercises like pranayam, it can be done by anybody. And then proper reading habits, self introspection. Uh, try to read as many as good, good books as possible. Proper meditation upon flame, on lighted lamp, ocean, splashes, you are listening, colors, ragas, or many views you can see and you can meditate. Music therapy, mantra chikitsa, you can do that. And avoid isolation, become part of society. And devote time for social and selfless services. Part, become a part of social service group. And try to give your time to that. Or even not that, go to your garden, do gardening. And do something for the... Some, some be busy for some constructive activities. New salad combinations, balanced diet. I'm just giving you a few suggestions which you can see. New salad combinations you can try. Fruit nuts and raw vegetables, raw or steamed vegetables, boiled vegetables, fiber rich diets like oats, like uh, various uh, uh, things which are available in the uh, market today. Whole wheat flour. जो हम मैदा निकाल लेते हैं उसका उसको ना निकाल के उसमें डाल दें और बॉइल्ड राइस बॉइल्ड राइस आर वेरी गुड बॉइल्ड बोटेटोज आर आल्सो गुड विद द स्किन बीन्स एंड पल्सेस एंड देन द अल्टीमेटली फ्रूट्स इज अल्टरनेटिव टू पाइस बट इंस्टेड ऑफ टेकिंग पाइस एंड द सीड्स ट्राई टू टेक फ्रूट्स रादर देन दैट दिस इज अ बैलेंस्ड डाइट स्प्राउटेड पल्सेस व्हीट जैम्स अवेकन इनर स्ट्रेंथ एंड रिड्यूस स्ट्रेस प्राणा मींस Breathing qui and prana and praski, breathing properly, meditation, exercise and yoga. Importance of breath, key factor in determining lifespan can regulate balance between both hemisphere of the brain. Pranayam can, uh, can establish a, a balance between the two hemispheres. So try to do pranayam as much as possible. Proper oxygenation of the blood will occur and uh, the body will be fully oxygenated. One of the major causes of stress is incoherency of thoughts, mainly due to lack of noble aims and ideals. Try to uh, bring those coherent thoughts together by meditation. During meditation, the body gains a state of profound rest. At the same time, the brain and the mind become more alert, indicating a state of a restful alertness. Meditation creates a unique hypometabolic state, a unique hypometabolic state in which the metabolism is an even deeper state of rest than during sleep. So that meditation of 15 minutes in which you can meditate on the sun, early morning rising sun or ocean 
or a mountain Himalayas like this. You just keep a photograph in front. During sleep, oxygen consumption drops by 8%, but during meditation, it drops by 10 to 20%. Meditation is the only activity that reduces blood collected, a marker of stress and anxiety. Meditation brings together all the energies of the mind and focuses them on the chosen point. That's why I am writing positive thinking, positive thinking, and positive thinking helps you in meditation like anything. Streams of positive thoughts, ditty, flame, or fragrance. Any flower you can keep in front of you and meditate on the fragrance of that. Achievements of meditation. There are a few achievements. Enhanced memory, muscular relaxation, mental equipoise. Mentally you are more at, at equipoise level. And inner calmness. In, in, from inside you are calm posed. Ultimately increase awareness. You are aware about the surroundings. Cheerfulness all the time. You are all the time cheerful. Disappearance of jealousy, lust, behavioral modification. And a cleanser of mental garbage. We are, we are very garbage oriented society. So in this garbage oriented society, you should be very clear about your mental garbage. Mental garbage should be cleaned every moment by, the, by this meditation. This is just the glimpse of uh, what I am showing you, the headquarters of Shantikun Haridwar, where I am living. This is the head headquarter and uh, this is on the NH hi National Highway, Delhi Niti Pass Highway, main headquarter in Haridwar, just in the end of Haridwar, starting of Dehradun. Dehradun is my university. Uh, Hardwar is my ashram, just 100 meters away from each other. Just the, in between is the border of the Hardwar and Dehradun district. Very serene, composed place. Nothing is charged for staying, living there. You can come and you can stay there with us. You will enjoy the activities going on there. They, all people from all walks of life, all religion, they come and they stay with us. This is the Shantikun's various inside buildings uh, structure. And this all has been erected by the meager contribution from masses. About 100 million people are added to this organization, 10 crores. And these people, they give their one day salary or one rupee per day, five rupees per day. This is how this, this all is construction has been done. There are a few activities which I want to show nationwide youth awakening campaign. I created a, a, a mission known as DIA, Divine India Youth Association. That DIA is working on this in this direction by bringing lot of social activities, charitable activities. Uh, this is the scientific spirituality which we are doing in the uh, our uh, our research lab of which I am director and I started it. You can see my photograph of 1979, this one, uh, when I was very young, 28 years old. And this is the uh, this is our university, very very s nicely located in the foothills of the Himalayas. You are in, there are 5,000 students studying there and. The, they are studying in about 53 courses are being run by us. It is a residential university. Four convocations have been held, two of them in the presence of president of that time, APJ Kalam Sahab and the modern, right now the present president, the Pranam Mukherjee ji. These all, all have awarded the degrees to the students. It is a totally modern facility with Gurukul outlook. You can see the Gurukul outlook and uh, we are trying to give them all sorts of exposure. Human excellence, the only key to that is lastly, the, I am coming to the capacity development. You develop and enhance your capacity. Capacity development is something which uh, is the key to the refinement of the talent. Second is managerial ability. Managerial capability is something which is not innate. It comes by practice. Managerial capability you have to develop. Third is refinement of personality. Vektitka Parishkar. Refine your personality. Whatever you are today, you will become much better. And then leadership skill. Develop your leadership skill to such a level that you ultimately start leading the society, leading the whole group which of which you are a part. Pratibha Parishkar. This is what is the main essence of the excellence. A proper symbiotic relationship between emotion, thoughts, compassion and rationality. And uh, lastly, the world is getting ready for a big change. Will you participate? I am asking you a question. Let, later on you can ask me a question. Will you, will, the world is getting ready for a big change. Will you participate in that? Thanks a lot. Lastly, last slide. This is symbol of my organization, burning torch of knowledge. And with this human excellence and the thoughts to be changed in the people, masses, we are trying to bring all sex together, all work together. Thank you very much for listening to me so patiently.
Thanks. Thanks for a wonderful trip.